Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaskar and a very warm welcome to all of you. I am Vatsala Misra and it's a pleasure to be back here again sharing whatever little I have, whatever little I know again with you. Uh, I'm starting this uh, second lecture series on introduction to Japanese language and culture from today and I hope you all enjoy the series and you learn a lot of Japanese. Well, before I move on to our class, I would like to share a few things with you. The first and foremost is that uh, this lecture series is a continuation of the previous lecture series that uh, you have already seen. Though uh, the previous series is not a prerequisite for this course, but yes, it will be good if you go over the series so that there is some background in Japanese mm, and it will help you do this course as well. Now, <coughs> I will take this first week to revise what we have done in our uh, uh, previous uh, lectures where we covered uh, verbs, we covered uh, uh, phrases, we covered kanji, we covered a lot of greetings. So all those uh, things we will cover here so that it creates a common background for all the students even if you have little knowledge of Japanese whatever exposure you have through through your animation or manga. So well, I will be talking about the course, my motivation for doing the course about the JLPT exam for which I have received a lot of mails and uh, the course outcome that is what to expect after doing this course. So well, regarding the course, it is a 12 week course where each week we will upload approximately two and a half hours of uh, lecture. It could be less, it could be more and also give you assignments every week. There will be a forum where you can post your queries and seek clarification regarding lectures and of course about the course as well which uh, the TAs and the office will try to resolve as quickly as possible. The pattern is very simple. We will cover new topics in grammar sentence construction, special features of the Japanese language that is polite honorific forms, the forms used in formal and informal conversation, difference in forms used by men and women. So basically to keep it simple, the lectures have been made keeping Nichijo Kaiwa in mind and so as conversation is our goal, grammar is going to be dealt accordingly. We will also learn common Japanese proverbs, new kanjis as I said earlier, greetings and expressions. Now the course is also designed to give the students an exposure to the JLPT exam. We will try to look at some questions and patterns as well in our lectures. I have received a lot of mails for this so I will be talking about JLPT soon. Well as you can understand it is a logical extension to the previous course but I would like to say that more than that I have received innumerable requests from males to do a course which is more than the basic level of Japanese which would help students in the JLPT exam which is the proficiency exam for Japanese language which I will talk about later. So first and foremost I would like to thank all of you not only from India but from various parts of the world for your valuable comments regarding the lectures in the first series. It was very encouraging and very motivating. It gave me the confidence to do this lecture series and I hope that I'm able to help you clear all your doubts through these lectures and I also hope that these lectures will help you clear your proficiency exams. Now regarding uh, the JLPT exam, 
Like TOEFL for English, the JLPT exam is the standard proficiency test for Japanese language and is held by the Japan Foundation twice a year in July and December. There are five stages from N5 to N1 where N1 being the highest and N5 being the lowest level of proficiency. The exam is conducted in Japanese. I am sure you all know about it. Knowledge of all the scripts is required for writing the exam where reading, listening, grammar skills are tested and uh, more details regarding JLPT can be found uh, at the website which I have also mentioned over here. Now I would like to make this very clear right now that our course is not designed as tutorials to prepare students for JLPT and this information regarding JLPT is included only for benchmarking. Please remember that the emphasis and thrust is different. JLPT is designed to test Japanese language ability whereas we focus on largely oral communication. And this is manifested in the fact that we are doing the written part in Roman. Though I have tried to write the Japanese script as well for students who want to learn the three scripts, but you will see that Roman is not acceptable in the JLPT framework. Now as far as the general grammar is concerned, the previous course covers the syllabus of all of N5 and a small part of N4, whereas this course covers all of N4 and a good part of N3. So I'm sure uh, regarding JLPT, uh, everything is clear to you now. Now talking about the course outcome or what you should expect from the course. Well, at the end of the course, you should be able to do simple short conversation in Japanese, which means that you should be able to understand expression and basic conversation. And by basic conversation, I mean that one should be able to go around in Japan without any language related difficulty in terms of asking directions, ordering food, buying tickets, normal shopping and so on. And of course, I feel that you should be able to clear your N4 of the JLPT easily. Now, even though I have just now said that it will be easy for you to clear JLPT N5 and N4 with the help of these lectures, Please remember there is a condition attached to it and I am sure you can guess the condition as well. The condition is provided you are sincere in your approach to learning and put in some effort on what is done in class. Practicing regularly and uh, using the resources available on the internet to improve your understanding in reading, writing, listening, vocabulary, conversation etc. So this is something you will have to do on your own. Without this, it will be difficult to talk in Japanese. So now let's get started with our revision. Till now, as you know, we have only seen one script, but Japanese has three scripts. It has hiragana, it has katakana, and it has kanji. The first two scripts, hiragana and katakana, are phonetic, which means it is sound-based, meaning Whatever you say, you write. As we would do in Hindi in Devanagari. Now there is another script which is the Kanji script. These are pictograms and ideograms. Meaning there is an idea behind the Kanji character. The Kanji that we write. It is depicted in lines as you already know. And all three scripts in Japanese are used simultaneously. So I have the scripts also for you here. You can see hiragana is there. It's given with colorful pictures for you to memorize the vocabulary. So now you will see over here that I have put it from left to right. Japanese right from right to left also and from left to right also. So a, E, U, A, O, like this. Then you join the sound K with A and make Ka, E, Ku, K and Ko. And then you have the sound of S and you make Sa, Shi 
which is an exception su se and so similarly for the sound ta ta chi this is again an exception su te to and then na na added to a add the sound na to e and na ni nu ne no and similarly for the sound ha which is ha hi hu he and ho now this is the sound ma and the sound ya r now you will notice that ma mi mu me mo is all right but you have ya over here and something is missing and u and then ye again is missing so these sounds are not there because they are similar to e sound similar e and ye that is a similar to a that's why these sounds are not included then you have ra ri ru re ro and now similarly you just have a wa and not we wo we and wo because these are very similar to e u a and o this o over here though has been retained o this is used as a particle and not as a syllable now the sound m mm, which is nasal is similar to the half n sound and used in words like ringo ringo and hon for example hon this is how n is used then we have it right here for you from right to left i purposely put it so that you know how it's written in japanese and the stroke order is also given and you can practice a e u a o and then ka ki going down like this ku ke ko right till wa and o and m mm. now these are extra sounds ga gi gu ge go then za ra ji this is an exception zu ze and zo da ji zu de and do and ba bi bu be bo and pa pi pu pe po this is sound pa this is ba this is ta now you will notice one thing that these syllables are similar to the syllables in the first set for this one it is ka ki ku ke ko sa shi su se so and similarly right till the end now these are some short sounds you have kya kyu kyo cha chu cho kya hyu hyo ria riu rio sha shu sho nya nyu nyo and nya nyu nyu all of it is given on the net check it out yourself now there is a small mistake here this is not an exception we have katakana for you similarly from right to left like this and top to bottom same vowels are given a e u a o and kaki ku ke ko in a similar manner as in hiragana you can remember the words over here and the important thing here is that all foreign words which are non japanese in origin that is are written in katakana stroke order is given very clearly for you a e u a o and kaki ku ke ko so now let us see what we have in our lesson here watashi wa tanaka desu particle wa now this is a grammatical particle which generally follows a noun or a pronoun the subject or the topic is followed by particle wa so once you place your wa properly the sentence is correct so now watashi wa tanaka desu in place of tanaka you can use rao you can use mira or any other name hanako ha na ko 
okay, any other name. So, Watashiwa so and so this, I am so and so. Now, this is the verb part, it is the be verb in English. So, Watashiwa Tanaka this, instead of Tanaka any name can come. Now, Watashiwa Indojin this, so you can replace name of a person, name of a person with what? Nationality. So, Indo is India and Jin is belonging to this country, person, Jin is person. So, Watashiwa America Jin this, America, America Jin this, Watashiwa Nihon Jin this, Watashiwa Nihon Jin this, Watashiwa Kankoku Jin this, Kankoku Jin this. So, I am a person from this place basically, I am Korean, I am Japanese, I am American and this kanji over here stands for hito, hito which means person. Okay. Now, you can replace name with nationality, pattern remains the same. Now, we have in place of nationality or name, you can put your profession, watashi wa isha desu. Watashi wa kangofu desu. Watashi wa bengoshi desu. So, this is your profession. Bengoshi is a lawyer, kangofu is a nurse, and isha is doctor. Well, instead of gakse, you can put any of these. So, you can put your name, your nationality, and your profession here and the pattern is the same. Then we also have something else over here, you can put age as well, watashi wa hatachi desu, hatachi is 20 years, watashi wa niju issai desu, Ni, niju issai desu, I am 21 years old. So, sai is the counter for age as you have already studied, but please remember that with hatachi which is 20 years, sai is not used. You can introduce yourself anywhere, name, nationality, profession, how many years and also over here you will see you can add any name otosan or okasan. Wa so many years this, oka san wa hachiju sai this, oka san wa goju sai this, oto san wa isha this, oto san wa bengoshi this. So, anything you can add instead of watashi, another noun that you have studied. Now, we will do a new particle, watashi wa nerolak paints no rao this. So, watashi wa you have already done. Nerolac paints, no, of Nerolac paints, belonging to Nerolac paints. So, I am, I am Rao of Nerolac paints. So, please with particle no over here, you will show possession. For example, Watashi no des. It is mine. Watashi no, watashi no otosan no des, chichi no des, watashi no chichi no des, meaning it is of or belongs to my father. So, instead of watashi, you can again put chichi, haha, tomodachi. And instead of Nerolac paints over here, you can put Tokyo Denki, Asian paints, anything, any kaisha, any place of this place belonging to this 
place specifically of a certain place or a certain company or kaisha now koreva nerolak pain snow rao san no this now what is kore we have done this previously so kore sore are and dure this is called the ko so ado series where kore sore are dure is used for theme so kore wa this that i am pointing at wa nerolak paints no rao san no this this thing that i am pointing at or showing you belongs to rao san who is from nerolak paints or you can say kore wa watashi no this this kore could be anything whatever you are pointing at so when you point at something your listener will automatically know what you are talking about so you do not have to name the object kore sore are and this is equivalent to this that and that over there or which we'll talk about this later now as i just explained to you kore sore are kore sore are and dore which is a question word so this is always followed by particle wa kore sore are plus wa because you are not naming the object now kore wa gakko no desu so whatever the object whatever the thing wa place place no this belongs to this place is of this place belongs or is of this place so kore wa watashi no gakko no desu so again there are two nos over here kore wa this thing wa watashi no gakko my school no this it belongs to my school it is of my school particle no shows belonging or possession now there is a question word over here which is dare which means who kore cannot be used for people please remember always for things so kore wa dare no desu ka whose is it so dare is a question word used for people now we have kono sono ano and dono again a question word over here this is also from the ko so ado series kono hon wa watashi no desu watashi no means mine hmm? kono hon now what are we doing instead of saying kore we are saying kono hon so we are naming the object the listener who is in front of me knows the name also of the object kono hon this book it's a little different from this which says this object and does not name the object which is kore over here we are using kono which names the object tells the name of the object and says i'm talking about this object kono hon wa watashi no desu now another new particle that we have over here today is mo mo is equivalent to to or also in english now when can you use mo once this has been established kono hon wa watashi no desu the object has been mentioned once the topic or the subject has come once in conversation then if it is repeated then kono hon mo also watashi no desu kono hon wa watashi no desu book 1 wa watashi no desu book 2 mo watashi no desu the second book also belongs to me please remember for mo you need to establish your topic or whatever you are talking about 
once earlier. You cannot just come and say, Kono hon mo watashi no desu. So, where is the first one that you have told about? Kono hon mo watashi no desu. Book also belongs to me. Now, over here, instead of watashi, again, you can have chichi, haha, imoto. Imoto is younger sister. So, kono hon wa chichi no desu. Kono hon mo chichi no desu. That's how you will use it. The difference between kono, kono and kore. Kono noun plus wa and kore wa. Another thing is it can also be used for people as I told you earlier and things both but this can only be used for things. This is the basic difference in kono and kore. Now you can just look at these two sentences here. Watashi no hon wa kore desu. Watashi no hon my book wa kore desu with no over here. That's the relationship between me and my book. Wa, now my book becomes my topic of conversation. So wa kore desu. This one. Watashi no hon wa kono hon desu. This particular book is mine. Now, kono hon wa watashi no desu. You can also use kono hon wa, this comes first, wa watashi no desu. All three in a broad sense mean the same, grammatically they are different, so you can use it any which way you want during conversation. And I am saying broadly it means the same. What you convey by this is similar. Now we have a question word which is ikura. Ikura means how much. So what will you do with ikura? You will ask price. Kore wa this thing that I am pointing at or I am holding wa ikura desu ka. Now again with kono, so I am pointing at the kaban or I am holding the kaban which is a bag wa ikura desu ka. Over here, kore wa, I am not naming the object, not naming it at all, but over here I am naming the object which is a bag. So, kono kaban wa ikura desu ka. This particular bag that I have in my hand wa ikura desu ka. Now, if you want to buy something, you want to pay and you want to buy, then what will you say? Kono hon or kore o kudasai, please give it to me. Kono hon wa, this book that I have, wa ikura desu ka or kore o kudasai, you point and say kore o kudasai. Kudasai means please and this particle is particle o, which shows direct relationship between the noun over here and the verb. So, noun o verb is the pattern where there is direct relationship, action is happening on the noun. So, instead of hon, you can have anything, ringo o kudasai, mikan o kudasai, pen o kudasai, you can have any of these and replace it with hon and ask price and buy. Now, I want to do some kanji also with you, kanji that we have already covered. So, very, very quickly, you know ichi, ni, san, shi or yon, go, roku, nana, hachi, kyu and ju. So, you also know how to write it, kyu is like this, ju you know. Then she is a little difficult, so I will write it down for you. And again, go over here. This is a stroke order. Roku like this. Shichi and Hachi is very clear. These are numbers. Then now, you have this kanji which means kuchi. Kuchi. 
then you have Nichi. All details are already given in the previous lecture series. This is Hyaku. So, what you need to do is just add this part over here and it becomes Hyaku. So, the stroke order is like this Hyaku, which means 100. Hyaku and do not say Hayaku because Hayaku means quickly. Ku means quickly and this is a short sound Hyaku and then Sen like this, Man which is the counter for 10,000 yen, then you have N which is Japanese currency and this I told you earlier is Hito. Then we also have these, this is Nichi you did just now, Nichi then Tsuki, these are the basic meanings. This is he, this is mizu, mizu. So, tsuki is made like this, he is made like this, then mizu is made like this, it is a four stroke character. This is he, which means tree, then okane, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight over here, then this is tsuchi. And this is Okane. When they are used as days of the week, then the readings are different. This is Nichi Yobi, Nichi Yobi, Getsu Yobi, Kayobi, Kayobi, Sui Yobi, Moku Yobi, Kin Yobi, and Do Yobi. And Yobi stands for days of the week. Now, there are some other kanji characters. This is Kawa, 1, 2, 3, Kawa, then Yama, 1, 2, 3, Yama. Then this is field, which is Ta, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This is Oki, O O K E, one, two, and three. Then Chisai, which is small, Chisai. Then this is Hon, like Ki, one, two, and three. Hon, which is there in Nihon. This is Naka. In Chugoku, another reading is Chu. You can remember from Chugoku, which is China. This is Shita, Shita, and this is Ue, which means up. Now, these are some combinations Ju N, Ju N, then Hyaku N, then Q, Hyaku N, then Hyaku Man. N. Then we have Junin, Junin, Hyakunin, Nin, then Hyaku, Man, Nin, then this is a special reading which is Otona, which means adult. Otona. Now, you have hon, hon you have already done and this kanji is used in nihon, then you have nihon jin, another reading for hito is jin, you have done in nationality, indo jin, then nihon jin, Japanese and then you have nihongo which you need to remember because that is what we are studying. So, Nihon and Go and interestingly you will see it is made of three characters. This means to speak, this means five and this means Kuchi which is mouth. So, saying so many words from your mouth. So, means you are talking which is talking in a language. So, it is Go. Now, 
iriguchi this is very similar to uh, to hito hito is like this one stroke and then two over here now this is different this is one stroke which is small and the second one is the large one so iriguchi is written in two ways iriguchi is also correct and iri guchi is also correct means entrance now this is deguchi which is written like this two yamas together and guchi is the mouth so deguchi means exit so now we have daigaku dai and gaku this you have done as big so big place of learning is daigaku gakusei learning person gakusei student sensei person person who is born before you will have more knowledge and more experience so he's your sensei he's your teacher and gakko place of learning which is school then some common kanji names honda honda yamada morita mo morita then yamamoto then miki and kawaguchi these are some very common names honda san yamada san morita san yamamoto san miki san and kawaguchi san this will also help you learn the kanji characters so i have put ta over here again and again yama also kuchi also for you to memorize the kanji characters now something very interesting i have put some similar looking kanjis so you have done this kanji hito this is ireru which means to pour or hairu which means to enter so very similar kanjis stroke order is different so one and two for hito whereas it's the other way around for ireru which is one and two these are similar so when you are printing this is put so that it is very very clear then we have oki and hito again so just cut this hito and it becomes oki which is big so the idea is this man is standing with his hands open and you look very very big thus oki like this and hito like this then another kanji which is very similar is okay you should do all three together so this is michi for michiyobi as you have seen this also means sun as i have told you earlier now if you just add this stroke over here it becomes shiroi which is white and then if you add another stroke over here on top it becomes yaku yaku and shiroi are very very similar so 1 2 3 Four, five, and six, and then you have one, two, three, four, and five. This is shiroi, and this is hyaku. And then we have ki, one, two, three, four, ki. And if you cut ki, you can make a book out of it from the paper. So this is hon, cutting ki and making paper and making a book out of it. so these are some very similar looking kanjis we'll do this exercise on and off in our uh, lessons this will help you memorize the kanji characters so there is a small uh, aisatsu no uta aisatsu is greetings uta is songs there is a small song over here and with the help of this song we will do some expressions you have covered some and we will do some over here we'll revise them once again the uta is very sweet you can just listen to it it is on the net you have animal characters over there and with the help of those characters we learn expressions so we'll listen to this uta carefully
So, well, how was the song? I hope you enjoyed it and you could catch a few phrases. So, with this, I will end our class for today. I hope this is going to help you revise all of this, come prepared for the next class. Kore de minasan, mata ashita aimasho. Let's meet again tomorrow. Till then, arigatou gozaimashita.